Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just uh, one brief announcement before our sermon today. Today is an El Pida Sunday, as you can see all the kids in the front three pews here. So um, we ask that before Holy Communion today, we let the kids come forward first so that they can then make their way uh, to their class. So thank you very much. Keep that in mind as we uh, move towards communion. Um, Oh, let me get my sermon here. So uh, before you can graduate from the seminary, you must complete a requirement called hospital ministry. And hospital ministry is where you learn how to visit uh, people in the hospital or where you learn to go see sick people or unfortunately even people that are passing away. And uh, we seminarians were split up around 10 or 15 different hospitals or care homes in the Boston area. And of all the different assignments, I was assigned to the Greek care facility, um, specifically the Hellenic nursing home in Canton, Massachusetts. Um, So I went for my first visit to the Hellenic nursing home and met with the director of the facility. She instructed me on what visitations would look like and assigned me to a couple different elderly women or yayavis, we might say, uh, to go visit that day. Now, the director emphasized that above the health issues and the old age, the issue that plagues these patients the most was loneliness. And she thanked me for coming to visit the patients in this facility as they were very lonely and very rarely received visitors. So she assured me that simply by being there, I would make the patients very happy. The director told me to go visit my first patient and talk to her, and she said that I could wheel her around the facility in her wheelchair if the woman asked me to. And I thought, oh, that sounds fun. We'll go for a little Volta or something, maybe. Um, So I got up to leave from the director's office, and I went to visit my first patient. Now, of course, I can't tell you the woman's name, um, but let's just call her Kula for the sake of this story. And as I left to go visit Kula, the the director stopped me and said, Cristo, wait, wait. I stopped. I said, well, what is it, director? She warned me, whatever you do, do not push Kula's wheelchair down hall 23. Okay. I replied, confused. Um, Then the director explained that Kula's arch enemy, uh, we'll call her Vula, uh, lives down hall 23. If you push Kula's wheelchair down hall 23, it will be World War III. So I nodded and assured her that I understood, and I went on my way to go find Kula. I found Kula in her room, and she was very excited to meet me. I introduced myself, and we chatted for about 15 minutes about this and that. Uh, Then she said, would you be a deer and take me for a stroll in my wheelchair? I said, sure, Kula, let's go for a stroll. We strolled and we strolled all over the facility. We went in elevators, we chatted with doctors, we painted the town red. We had uh, been strolling for quite a while, and I said, you know, all right, Kula, uh, maybe we should get you back to your room here. In a little bit, she said. Then she pointed to one area that we hadn't been and said, but let's take a pass down here first. I looked to the direction that she was pointing towards an ominous hallway. Uh, As I took a closer look uh, to my horror, I saw that the hallway was labeled number 23. (laughs) And I said, you know, Kula, I actually need to leave uh, pretty soon, so let's just go back the way we came from. And she said, oh, no, 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 don't worry. This is a shortcut back to my room. I'll show you. Now, being the young, gullible seminarian I was, I thought, oh, a shortcut? Okay, let's, let's take the shortcut. Why not, Kula? Um, so we took about five steps down Hall 23 when arch enemy Vula came flying out of her room in her wheelchair. Uh, Vula came flying out, screaming and shouting in Greek, and pointing her finger at Kula. And then somehow Kula and Vula had locked each other in a wheelchair battle by grabbing each other's wheels 
and they were shouting and screaming at each other very loudly. I was totally powerless in this situation and frozen in fear, to be honest, didn't know what to do. Um, luckily, uh, two nurses had heard the commotion and came running down to separate the two women. I went to the director to tell her what had happened and I was worried that I might even get in trouble for going down Hall 23, but the director assured me that she did not blame me and in fact that she had a feeling uh, I would be tricked into going down there anyway. <clears throat> then the director reflected and made an interesting comment on this situation. She said, loneliness does nasty things to people. Loneliness does nasty things to people. No one really talks about loneliness, probably because it is indeed such a nasty or painful feeling. It is one of the most difficult feelings to endure. When people feel lonely, they do not feel love. They do not feel warmth. They do not feel support or validation. So many of the positive feelings that we should feel in life depend on not feeling lonely. Today's gospel passage is not a very well-known one, but it is a very powerful one because it gives us a peek into the compassion and the very human aspect of Jesus Christ. Jesus was entering a city called Nain, where a funeral procession was going past him in the other direction. In the gospel it says, a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. In other words, this woman, the mother of the deceased, had lost her husband at some point as well. And now this woman, having lost her son, was completely alone in the world. Then it says, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. In other words, the Lord was not moved by seeing the dead son. He was moved by seeing this mother that was now all alone in the world. This is what moved Jesus to resurrect the son and bring him back to life. We see Jesus act in a very personal way in this miracle. Christ says, young man, I say to you, arise, and it says, and the dead man sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. He gave him to his mother. A very compassionate action, a very intimate action, a very loving action we see here by Jesus Christ. Loneliness is perhaps one of the worst torments a person can suffer in this life, and this is why we see Christ act so quickly compassionately and gently in today's gospel passage. He did not want this woman to be alone. The many prayers of our church have various themes. Many of the prayers have to do with not wanting to be alone. We hear one of the most beautiful prayers during the Lenten season when we pray the Compline service. You may have heard it. It's called the Lord of the Powers, and it goes like this. Lord of the powers, be with us. For in times of despair, we have no other help but you, O Lord. Lord of the powers, be with us. Lord, be with us. When we feel lonely or alone, this should be our prayer. If loneliness brings all the bad feelings, despair, frustration, anger, God brings all the good feelings. He brings love. He brings hope. He brings support, peace, and patience into our lives. So if we ever feel a little loneliness creeping in, let us turn to God. Let us not be so overwhelmed by all the negativity associated with loneliness that we lash out at others to the point where perhaps we end up having wheelchair battles in our old age. Let us turn to God to replace loneliness with His love his gentle presence, and his peace. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. Amen.